I see. Nobody will let me eat. Nobody will let you eat? No, they'll let you eat. Well, not here. At this camp. What okay. camp? This camp here. They keep kicking me out. Yeah, I know. I'm about peace over here. I tried to grab a bottle of water over here, right. and the people took it out of my hand. Yeah. Okay, I was thirsty. Okay. Well, it's not your water. Whose water is it? Play that game, man. I don't know. I have people for the movement. Is there, do, is know, there a some restriction movement. for a inclusion? Of, a lot of people just no. take and don't get No, there's, back. there's no so uh, reason for inclusion. He's just uh, banned from this camp. And you have some form of uh, you know, disruptive behavior, and then you're asked to leave the place, and then you come back the next day and try to take some stuff, or so on and so forth, then there's a problem. I see, so it's, it's disruptive, not pro community. Exactly. Can I, can I turn this to you? He asked me to photograph him, so he can photograph him. Yeah, uh, basically, the way that we handle procedures in the camp is. Uh, when an incident occurs, the group sits down together and takes uh, not even a vote, but it has to be a decision. Everyone has to be in favor of whatever decision we come up with uh, in the entire camp. Uh, so we do not permit drugs or alcohol use on, uh, around this camp because it gives us a bad name. I see. And, uh, even the possession will get you off. Even possession. Um, right. So is it a one, is your GA, does it require a 100% um, unanimous decision? By the peacekeepers, if it's not a physical altercation, by the peacekeepers and by the uh, night watch, yes. Safety. There's zero tolerance for any endangerment of the people in this camp. Well, tomorrow, supposedly, we're supposedly supposed to have like a thousand people and speakers and all kinds of stuff supposed to be going on tomorrow it's supposed to be and, uh, feeding homeless and uh, taking care of homeless as best as we can um, if a homeless person wants to join the occupation that's fine uh, they can and they can come and camp out with us uh, I'd say maybe 20 percent 30 percent of the people here are homeless do you find that your donations are ample to support the people who need food or need, need assistance been, with shelter it has been at times right now Really struggling on food. Mm -hmm. um, it's really, really low. Food is low. Um, How are you organized? In the week, Monday, okay. I mean, we had so much food, cereal, and milk, and snacks, and hostess, or someone donated a ton of hostess, like snack cakes and Twinkies and stuff. You had a lot of Yeah, now we're just, now we're on peanut butter and apples, you know. Yeah. At certain times, people bring donations of, uh, you know, like stews or, you know, various necessities that we need. But it's it's sporadic. It's not like a consistent thing. Right. You know, so like, it's basically, we're basically living here solely off of the generosity of others. Um, well, putting a call out for space seeders, electric space seeders, we do have uh, a generator right now. Um, someone had brought up the idea of building a yurt, which is the same concept as a TP, but it's circular shaped, like a uh, circus tent. And if we did that, we'd be able to have a, uh, a trash can fire on the inside of it, and you can fit up to 40 people in it. Okay. So that would help us. Um, we will be moving over to that park uh, tomorrow because our permit is up for here. And most likely they will not be arresting us because we will have so many people over there with us. Um, but that's really about it to prepare for winter right now. To our OccupyCleveland.com. And if you go to OccupyCleveland.com, there's a link or links on the, side, on the left hand side to all our other websites. Okay. And are you guys having a problem with hacking? I know a lot of uh, the not other Occupy all, groups not are really, not really, getting no. their websites hacked. No. 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 That's no, no. Um, we have an IT guy that actually went to school for that that's on our tech team, so he made sure all the websites are secure. So. And are, are you guys doing other. Um, kinds of uh, workshops and organizing uh, um, a information? A little bit. We have been. Uh, this week has been really stressful because we have to get everything packed up and we have new people joining every day and then informing them about our move tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, but we do have a huge rally tomorrow at 1 and we've got uh, a couple unions coming down so there'll be a couple thousand people down here tomorrow so it should be a really big day. Yeah. So, yeah, Great. I'm really excited. And have you been uh, occupying, how long is it? I've been since, here since day one. When, when was day one? October 6th, so October two weeks today. Okay. But yeah, it's great. It's great to see how much it's grown. Uh, I think last time we had uh, close to 80 people with us last night. We started off with 34, so mm -hmm. it's definitely growing. And then 
at, at the same time, people are leaving for a day or two to take breaks because it is very stressful being here 24-7. Mm -hmm. um, I unfortunately can't do that because I don't have a car and my mom lives in Medina and I want to be here as much as possible. So I'm lucky enough to have some of these members that do live close by open up their doors to me so I am able to go home for, to their house and sleep in a real bed for a night and get some real rest mm -hmm. um, because it is hard to sleep on the concrete every night. Mm -hmm. but, but yeah, it's been great, and I've never felt so close to complete strangers in my entire life, so... Wow, that's quite a statement. Yeah, it's, it's huge. I hear that you're Neil and that you would love to talk to me. Sure, sure. Um, is there anything specific that you would like to know that might not have been covered yet about um, all this? Or? I feel like there's been a lot covered. I, I've noticed a police presence. I don't know if that's just proximity to public buildings or if you always have a monitor. Yeah, we're pretty much always always being watched. If not by, by cruisers, there's also cameras and these light posts. Um, so there's really no anonymity here. Like, um, you know, we've all had our faces on the pavement so far. Yeah. Um, but it, uh, that actually does stand towards um, how, you know, convicted, uh, how much uh, conviction we have towards this, that, you know, nobody here is really trying to hide behind a mask or anything. We're all out here being like, we're real people with real problems and we're in the streets trying to voice those because there's no other venue for that. You know, you, uh, you can't write letters to the editor and, and that and have it, anything be taken seriously. Um, so about the only thing that we could find to do is make a physical display. You know, we're, we're here and, and over the past couple of weeks, um, you know, we've been in a, a building growing stage and, and, you know, had a minor foothold. And uh, as of Friday, which is going to be our, our big event that we've advertised, you know, we're going to have a lot of uh, music and, and poetry and education and stuff. Um, after that, I think it's going to be our, our big stand. Um, this is why we're here. Um, up until now, it's been civil cooperation, and uh, we're moving into the civil disobedience stage. So, uh, I was going to say, I, very exciting. I noticed uh, not just for warmth, but you're wear a lot of people are wearing bandanas. Are you expecting any kind of um, action that would include the need for? I wouldn't say expecting, but preparing for it. Uh, I consider it preventative. Mm -hmm. um, we uh, we kind of evaluate the situation where as uh, we're we're in a highly public place mm -hmm. with a lot of people not directly affiliated with around. You know, um, so we're hoping they're not going to harm innocent bystanders by using you know air effect mm -hmm. uh, tactics to uh, to this witness. So we are looking at more dealing with pepper spray and, and mace and less of. The, the over the top tactics, and we've been an extremely peaceful movement. Mm -hmm. So it'd be really important case to, uh, to treat us like riot, riot. We've actually, you know, reduced crime in public square. Fed a lot of the homeless. Uh, talk to a lot of people that, that uh, just come by, and they've been frustrated for years, you know. And, uh, and finally, they have somebody, some place they can walk up and talk to people that feel the same way. And uh, that's almost like a public service. You know? Yeah. The, one of the topics that came up was how many, especially college students in Pittsburgh, are kind of gung ho to get arrested in the name of civil disobedience, um, but that they are trying to institute camp wide policies of when they receive some kind of notification of eviction, that they give the people who wish to not be arrested the opportunity to leave. Is that something that's being addressed in your camp? Yeah, we've actually been talking about that for days. Mm -hmm. And uh, people that don't want to, and, and we're not like, nobody's looking to be arrested. You right. Know? But um, an act of civil disobedience might result right. in re detention. We realize that anybody on the front line of that that's actually going to try to defend the camp um, is going to have that possibility, that possibility of arrest. Um, however, uh, anybody, there's people already leaving today, you know, that understand what's going to happen and they don't want to be part of that and that's perfectly understandable. There's other people that want to be our support, you know, want to uh, know who everybody is, hold on to personal effects, take care of things in their absence while they're being processed. Um, so there has been a lot of preparation and, uh, and it's not, nobody's gung-ho about it, you know, like we're, we're doing what we have to do and we're taking all the necessary steps that we can think of to, to prevent it. To, to ease that transition, to make things run as smoothly as possible. Okay. So, um, there has been, um, and I, I assume it's like this at, at most occupations, but there's been a real um, uh, mentality of, of peace here. You know, like we're really trying to, this is a, a real chaotic city that's been really depressed and downtrodden for like 25 years at least. Um, so, so we're actually here like having a completely different impact. We're not like trying to disrupt everything. We're actually trying to bring things back to normal. Mm. This, this city suffered massive political corruption. Uh, left 
huge homeless populations and, uh, and people have nowhere to go. It's actually illegal to be homeless here like in most places. Um, we've, uh, some people have joined the camp that have been homeless for, for decades and, uh, and they'll tell you horror stories about the way that they are treated. You know, they mass condemn areas just so that they can tear them down and build something new there. And then when everybody gets kicked out of those areas, they get, you know, twice a year they get rounded up and processed, all their belongings get taken, they're just treated like animals. Charity, charity people come by and like give blankets and coats and all these things to the homeless and then they come around like twice a year, the police round them all up, process them, take away all their belongings and just put them back out in the streets empty handed. So it's like even the, the charity work that does happen gets nullified by, by administrative uh, I see. Um, and okay, you brought up something that's specific to this area. I think it. I think it might be a little consistent with a lot of Rust Belt cities um, that have seen a shrinking of their urban core, in, in and then, like you said, uh, mass kind of raising of condemned housing. Well, they actually um, come through and condemn the houses so that they don't have to go through eminent domain practices. I see. So, are these specific issues that, as a group, occupy? Cleveland is taking up, or would you say there's a... I'd say it's these are issues that us as a group are becoming aware of. I, I don't see. think we're all personally aware of these, these uh, like the scope of the issues we're dealing with until we're down here in a collective mass, talking to people on the streets, talking to each other, and sharing that information. Mm -hmm. um, it's information that's not shared in the media. It's information that's hard to come by unless you're here. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, you know, so we come from a lot of different walks down here of life, and some people uh, don't have a choice. Some people did this voluntarily, um, and uh, uh, I guess the best that I can I can put it is uh, something I realized real early when I was down here: uh, is that when people stand together against injustice, like they gain peace of mind. And that's a real simple statement, but it's like uh, a lot of us were depressed sick, angry, turning to drugs, alcohol, anything else to get us away from the, the feelings of futility and hopelessness. And we come down here and we get this like this empowered feeling where we're like, uh, we're all coming together to fight those things that would otherwise tear us apart as individuals. Uh, we're gaining like unity and uh, there's also like a huge uh, like cross-pollination of ideas. Uh, whereas before we were all individuals isolated, like now we're a collective unit. And I guess one of the biggest battles we face is keeping that collective unit together and grow. Um, I don't go what, off topic of that, but I'm what, what do you thinking of a million different things right now. Yeah, but, but what, do you, what do you think is essential to cohesion, to, I mean, to preventing splintering or dissolution of the, of the group? That's something we're trying to learn. Um, we spent, uh, you know, we're going on our third week, the end of our third week here, and uh, it's been a growing experience with lots of growing pains, you know, and it's like we look at a country that's taken 200 years and hasn't gotten it together and uh, you know, we're going on three weeks and, and uh, the hope is that we can we can get something together on a smaller scale faster than on a larger scale and then maybe if that's successful we can apply that, apply what we learned here elsewhere. Are you seeing more or less successes with the direct democracy actions that you are organizing as a uh, general assembly and that sort of thing? More, but that's because we've been willing to change. Um, when we found things that didn't work, we scrapped those and we started trying new things. And uh, that's something that's definitely missing in our government, you know, is that ability, uh, that willingness to abandon something that's a failure and start over instead of just keeping band-aids and keeping buying band-aids. Right. Uh, there's some brilliant minds down here um, that have imagined a wide scope of scenarios. Mm -hmm. um, so I would not be surprised to see us being able to adapt to an influx. Um, a lot of people have stepped up to be leaders, but there's no like central leadership, and that's been really important to us too. Um, it's, it's too easy to hand power over to people that want to take it, but it's the people that don't want the power that need to take it. You know? <laughs> Is there anything for you know people on the internet that might want to know more about what's going on here um, that you would like to share that's about Occupy Cleveland? Not necessarily just your personal experience, but something that um, is important about this Occupy movement. If you know, for example, maybe it's longevity. If you feel like you have some hurdles, um, or is there anything that you you wish could get out there more as a message? And if not, that's okay too.
open-mindedness. Yeah. I can't say there's any one specific website or one specific place you're gonna find all the information you need to. But there's a there's a trend to uh, to because we're so inundated with propaganda in this culture, you know, from all sides, uh, left propaganda, right propaganda, any kind of propaganda. We're just overwhelmed by it. That it's like you can't just shut down on everything. You still have to listen to it, and if it takes you days or weeks to process that and decide whether or not that's like good information or bad information, it's better than just shutting it out before you ever even took the chance to listen. So you wanted to talk to me about citizen journalists. Yes, uh, um, citizen journalists is very, very uh, important. We're all reporters. We have the technology. We have the cameras. We can do this thing. We cannot let Fox, CNN, and other corporate media write our history and to tell our story. That's why, you know, what you're doing right here is very, very important because if you're not documenting this and put on YouTube and getting it out there, then we're just here alone in Cleveland. Now we're connected to the whole world and we're telling the story because a lot of people can't come out here. A lot of people, there's a big support staff that's all through Cleveland and they cannot come out here but they work in other ways, on uh, online media sites, bringing down food, uh, requests for donations. So everybody out there, become a reporter. Document everything. Your neighbors, <laughs> if you have an old neighbor that went through World War II, the Depression, get them. That's history. They're not going to be around forever. Get those stories. Thank you very much, and over and out. <laughs> Thank you, Sam.